There are usually considered to be somewhere between 6,000 and 7,000 languages in the world. And almost all of them are found as little green dots on this particular website, Langscape. So this is a pretty impressive project that basically places each of the world's languages into a dot somewhere on this world map. Now, of course, languages cannot really be centered on one particular point. Um, and so they simply try to find, you know, whatever is the most suitable place for this dot. It's often uh, not necessarily exactly connected with where the language is spoken, uh, especially if it's one of the larger languages that's spoken over a wider area. But it's, uh, it can be quite interesting, and especially for the less common languages, because of course we can learn a lot about the world's major languages, the top hundred or so that are spoken by many millions, but almost all the languages below about the top hundred are spoken by very small numbers of people, often in uh, very local areas, and it's really hard to find a lot of information about them. Um, so this is one nice way to put them together. Now the default form of the map uh, includes these major and official languages. So you can see these uh, country borders here and we see some major official languages of these countries. But I like to see the world without uh, this tiling into countries and just to, you know, see this satellite picture of the world. Um, and you can get different map bases as well. And then when you zoom in, you can simply take a look at what's going on in that area. So first place that comes to mind that I would like to see is uh, what's often called the, the cradle of languages or uh, the world's language hotbed, which is the island of New Guinea. And so here, I mean, see if we can find it underneath all the green dots. Here is the island of New Guinea, completely covered in green dots. It has the most linguistic diversity uh, of any area of the world. Uh, and these uh, simply, you know, too many languages to even represent. Um, so now you can see uh, all the different uh, corners of this land um, and as we zoom in uh, we, we uh, start to see some resolution and some individual names so now we're going into the highlands just randomly zooming into the highlands uh, of New Guinea and um, now we're finally down to a local area you can see of only a few kilometers um, and here we can zoom into just a few, a few languages. Even within this small area, uh, many choices. And then you can simply uh, pick uh, any one of these languages um, and get uh, some information about it. So let's take this uh, particular language and see uh, it's taking some time to load the, the satellite image there. But here, here we have the Langal, uh, the Angal language, and it gives the uh, coordinates uh, that is, have been chosen to be sort of like the, the heartland or like the center point of this language. Somewhat arbitrary there, but they try to make it as close as possible to you know, where the core of the speakers are. So when you click on any one of these languages, you then get this, uh, you basically get links to wherever you can, you know, whatever, whatever information is available. Um, and so here, though these links up here are on the same page. So we see the miscellaneous language data, and then there's external links uh, going to external websites. So here we see for this particular Angal language, uh, you can see the uh, family, the families that it's considered part of. Now, it's considered 
here part of Indo-Pacific, but they warn you that the higher families are not necessarily agreed upon. Well, Indo-Pacific uh, is a giant family, uh, very loose family, definitely uh, not universally accepted that it's even a single family, uh, but that's the general region of languages. And the Trans-New Guinea or the Across New Guinea language family, that would be the largest family that might be accepted, although there's still debate there. And then you get into the sub-branches, Engan and the Angalkiwa. So this would be the uh, more local language group that it's part of. You get other names of the language, as often many languages have many different names, of course. And interesting that you see that here it's being officially called Angal, but it's also called East Angal. So there must be another language that perhaps is called West Angal as well, and also goes by another name. And Mendi, uh, so, so often, uh, just as with names for people, there can be a name of a language that its own speakers give it, and there could be a different name that other speakers give it as well. You get links to more information about this language. So this is, you know, here, here we have the uh, Ethnologue link. Ethnologue has a database of the world's languages. And here uh, it's being listed as a mid-sized stable language. This tells you how endangered the language is considered to be. So, you know, as far as the world's languages go, it's even, even though I just picked this random language in the middle of New Guinea, uh, it's still considered a fairly sizable and stable language compared to many that are out there. Now I'm curious to see, oh, well, they want me to pay Ethnologue. Okay, so Ethnologue is going to uh, restrict access to uh, some of their information. It's a very high quality uh, database, uh, but they're only giving you a little hint for free. However, that's where Wikipedia once again comes in. A very useful resource, obviously with all the caveats that cannot be 100% certain, of course, of a lot of the information, but that goes for all kinds of information that we find. For most topics, I find Wikipedia to be an excellent introduction point. And so here we get some general information. So we see that it is considered an, Eng it's part of the Engen group. And it's called a language complex, and the idea that it's not necessarily a single language. Uh, when you have many closely related languages near to each other, you, it's often uh, very difficult to, to impossible to even separate clear language boundaries. And so this idea of language complex includes many very, very closely related languages. And here we get the information that I was looking for, which is the number of speakers, native speakers, 80,000. Um, so even though that's small by global standards, it's still a very healthy local population as speaking this language. That's why it's considered to be stable, not endangered. And so also in interesting details, a Pandanus language, which is a very interesting uh, piece of uh, anthropology, uh, an avoidance language where the, it's, it, it's a special form of the language that is used to, to carry out certain cultural rituals. Um, so really uh, getting into all kinds of areas of anthropology here, just with the, from the entry point of this language. And you can find out about the larger family, um, the Engen family. Here they are in New Guinea. So this is what happened uh, from just zooming in this came from just zooming into a random point on the world map. And the entire map of the world is available here at Langscape. So if you're interested in a particular part of the world or just interested to get a picture of what the world's linguistic diversity looks like, uh, this can be a very fun resource to work with.